Christ is in our midst. Dear brothers and sisters, today's gospel reading, we see remarkable miracles. We heard how Jesus came to a place because the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, asked him to come to help his daughter. And by this time, the reputation of Jesus spread throughout the area, and people were thronging him. A loud, large crowd showed up. And in the midst of that crowd, there was one woman who suffered from hemorrhaging for 12 years. And she reached in just to touch the hem of his garment so that she would be healed. She, whether she understood or not, we don't know, but she approached him with faith. Because our Lord said, your daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. What's remarkable about this is that there were many people there. And we could imagine how many people were touching him. Even St. Peter says, Lord, you said, who touched me? How can you say such a thing? Look at all the people. Of course, of course you've been touched. But he says, no, someone touched me because I felt power leave me. This woman approached our Lord with deep faith. She didn't even touch Him. She touched the hem of His garment. We look throughout the Gospel and see every time that our Lord touches people, miraculous things happen. He gave sight back to the blind. He raised paralytics. He released people imprisoned by demons. Everyone who came to our Lord with faith were moved, were healed, were made whole. This woman apparently not only suffered her physical ailment, but there was something else going on with her life. Because our Lord didn't say to her afterwards, you're healed, your hemorrhage is stopped, go. But rather he said, you're whole. What does it mean to be whole? We know, we know that we are created in the image and likeness of God. We know that we are both of physical matter and spiritual matter. We, are, we have a body and we have a soul. We know that we were created by the hand of God. We know that He breathed in us His breath and gave us life, gave us a soul, gave us our spirit. And we know from Scripture how sin disturbed that harmony that exists or that should exist between body and soul. And when that harmony is disturbed, many things happen. The body suffers and the soul suffers. We, not all, we may not always see how the soul suffers, but we certainly see how the body suffers. All the physical ailments, all the addictions, all the shortcomings, all the weaknesses, but likewise our souls have weaknesses as well. We have doubt. We are short-tempered. We, we have difficulty for, to forgive. We have little faith. We judge others. We are selfish. When that harmony, brothers and sisters, is disrupted, both body and soul suffers. The Orthodox Church has the mystery of holy unction. 
And the church instructs us that we are to approach that as not only a forgiveness of sins, but also as a healing sacrament. And so we prepare to be touched by our Lord in holy unction by coming to confession, by asking him to forgive us our sins so that we may once again be made whole. And in that wholeness, we are more open to God's grace. In that wholeness, we are able to live our life in harmony with body and soul. In that wholeness, we are able to follow God's commandments. We are able to take up our cross in life. We are able to bear our difficulties with trust and faith. In that wholeness is life as God intended. But when we are not whole, we suffer tremendously. And so our Lord gave this woman not only healing from her hemorrhage, but gave her wholeness because of our, her faith. Saint Theophan the recluse said that what was different with this woman compared to all the other people who were touching him was that she turned to him with her heart. How many of us, brothers and sisters, pray with such faith? How many of us approach our Lord with such humility, with such sincerity? We all, we all pray from time to time. Many of us strive to pray every day, morning and evening. Many of us strive to keep the, the commandments, keeping the Sabbath day holy, and attending divine services regardless of all the hindrances and difficulties. Many of us don't pray as often or as frequently, but nevertheless, we all have something to ask. We all have some kind of petition on our lips. There's always some kind of need in our life. No one is without need. And our Lord today is telling us to pray with faith, to approach him with humility, to run to him with sincerity of heart so that he can touch you. We are touched, brothers and sisters, every time we pray. We are touched every time we fast, every time we seek out his will, every time we come into church, every time we partake of the holy mysteries, our Lord says, He who eats my body and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. We are not only touched by our Lord through communion, but we commune with him. We fall into union with him. But many of us sometimes feel as though our Lord doesn't hear our prayers. Sometimes we walk out of church after communion and don't feel any different. Sometimes it's easy for us to brush away the necessity of coming to divine services because we look at it as a formality. Sometimes praying becomes not only difficult but inconvenient. All these things we feel because of our shortcomings, because of our sinfulness, because of our selfishness, because of our doubt, because of our lack of faith, because of our love of this world and the lack of thirst for righteousness. We feel these afflictions in our life because we don't turn to our Lord with our hearts. Sometimes the grace of God doesn't touch us because our own petitions, our own desires are in the way. This woman naturally longed to be healed, but she received much more than that. She received much more than just the physical release of her ailment. She received wholeness. So, brothers and sisters, when we pray, 
when we fast, when we partake of Holy Communion, let us do it with our heart. Let not our petitions, let not our selfishness, let not our lack of faith, let not our own desires get in the way. But let's turn to Him with our hearts and open up our souls so that His will may be worked in us. Let us, brothers and sisters, approach communion with the same extreme humility and fear that this woman expressed. She thought in her heart, I'm not worthy to touch our Lord. I'm not worthy to stand in His presence. But if I only, because of my loneliness, touch the hem of His garment, then I will be healed. Let us, brothers and sisters, approach communion that way. And how do we do that? Saturday evenings, we don't watch Saturday Night Live. We turn off the TV and we say our prayers. We fast from midnight on. Sunday morning, we wake up. We don't turn on the computer. We don't turn on the news to see what the weather is going to be that day. We say our morning prayers, the prayers before communion. And then we come straight to church. We prepare for Holy Communion the whole week by saying our prayers evening and morning, by fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays, and by coming to confession on a frequent and regular basis. When we do all these things, we are expressing to our Lord that we are striving to turn to Him in our hearts. We are striving to open up our lives for His grace to work in us so that we may be whole. That ultimately is what we desire and ultimately what we need. We can't change the world around us. We can't even change the people around us. But we can change how we live in this world by calling upon God with our hearts, opening up our souls with faith so that we may once again be made whole. Amen.